Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Come on, let's put our hands together. Even at a funeral, I think we should still give the Lord praise. Because he's worthy to be praised. Ain't that right, y'all? Amen, amen, amen. Giving honor, amen, to Stephen McGee Funeral Home, to any other ministers in, of the gospel in, in this house today, and all officers that might be deacons or whatever your service is unto the Lord, we want to give honor to you and want to welcome you to Church of Perfecting Saints and to the service of my aunt, Miss Claritha Kaysen. Amen. 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 So as we begin this service today, let us bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now, God, even in this time of mourning, we realize, oh God, that without you, we can do nothing. We understand that death is a part of life and we all are appointed at least once to die and after that the judgment. So God, I just thank you right now. Thank you for this family. I pray, oh God, that, that you would bless them. This is my family. I pray that you would cover them in this pain they're going through of loss. I pray, oh God, that you would just comfort them and let them know that everything is going to be all right. I pray, oh God, that you would hold James in your hands right now because he is grieving, seems like, more than anybody else. And I just pray that you would hold him in your arms and comfort him and let him know that everything is going to be all right. I pray that you would also soothe the spirits of the friends and, and those that were acquainted with her and those that knew her. I pray, oh Father, that you would let them know, God, that she's all right. She's going to be just fine. And Father, I pray, oh God, that this service will be to your satisfaction. And I pray, oh God, that it will be a service that she would be proud of. And Lord, we honor you. We give you the praise. We give you the thanks. And everything that we ask for, we know we have it. Because you said, ask and you shall receive. You said, seek and you shall find knock and it will be open unto you. So God, I love you. I thank you and I praise you it's in Jesus' name and let the church say amen. Amen, amen. Our Old Testament um, scripture is a familiar one and it's coming from Psalm 23. It's one that everyone uh, should know. Amen. I remember in school, uh, back in the day when I was in school, in the 60s, you know, we had to say this in our devotional. And uh, we all knew it by heart. <laughs> and so if you, if you want to, you can say this along with me. Psalm, the, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. Forever. And then our New Testament scripture is coming from 1 Corinthians, uh, the uh, 15th chapter, and uh, beginning at verse 51. And the scripture reads as follows. It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Verse 53 says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on, uh, and this corrupt, and this incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. And verse 65 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And then it says, The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. So we're here today to celebrate uh, Claritha. And listen, y'all, um, you, you won't hear me say Claritha today. <laughs> um, I'm going to be talking about my Aunt Weasel. Because if I say Claritha, he, uh, Jane won't even know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Ain't that right, y'all? Yeah. And so we want to really honor her today. And uh, I think that she's worthy of, of that honor. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, this is a sad occasion, but, you know, she has lived a long life. Uh, she has. And so I just thank God, you know, that we get this chance uh, to send her off uh, with a bang. How about that? Is that all right? Amen. So at this time, uh, we want to give space for reflections, and the family has asked for two minutes, please. So let's try to honor the two minutes. Is there anybody? Let the church say amen. Amen, amen. amen again. Amen. And one time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. I got up to speak uh, about Weezer. Me and Weezer been neighbors for, I don't know how many years. I mean, about 20. And uh, we never had no arguments or anything. We helped one another. And James, she's going to be all right. I know you asked me to sing a song. And uh, I might sing two verses. I'm gonna do that so my two minutes won't be gonna run now. <laughs> but I, I, I love Weezer a, a whole lot. I really did. I found him I found him in time I found him in time I found him in time. Sometimes I cried all night long. Cause it seemed like everything going wrong. Toss and turn with tears in my eyes. Then I found Jesus by my side. So I tell it everywhere. That Jesus can save your soul. I found Jesus in time. 
Afternoon, church. Yeah. Say it again. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Those that don't, 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 don't know me, my name is Jay and Kaysen. <laughs> A lot of folks don't know me because you know I'm in and out of trouble all my life. You know. That lady there, I don't know. Seems like every time I get, get in trouble, she always there for me. You know. And I just got through doing time 2017. I came back home. I was going to see her every day. Prairie home. Rain, snow, shine. Wednesday night, right before she died, Thursday, I went in there at 12 o'clock that evening. Stayed all the way to Thursday morning until 4 o'clock. Called her back at 7 o'clock that morning, Thursday morning. Mama, how you feeling? She said, I feel good. Mama, she ain't, one thing about Clara, I'll wheeze them, they could say it. <laughs> one thing about her, she is not going to let you know she hurt you. That's right. I ain't never seen a woman like that pain free. I've seen men like that. <laughs> but she is one of those type that, you know. But I'm making sure. But anyway, um, you know, I got to, um, I said I'd be at the 12 o'clock on uh, Thursday afternoon. So, uh, you know, it started raining. I couldn't go. I couldn't go. I got a call. Sense in the bag. My sister behind y'all right there. She was there for us all, all the way around. Nigga the cold got her. I don't care what's going on. We're gonna make this life better for Weasel. That's right. That's what she wants. Mm -hmm. You know, she in a better hand. Yeah. She in a better hand. It's hurting me now, I'll be honest with y'all. Everybody lose a loved one, you know it's gonna hurt. It's hurting me. Out of all of my life, you know, in out of trouble, I was one of those type that wasn't there for long. I'm six, three years old, but me and her had six good years since I went back home. What well, hurt so bad? Fifteen of this month here, they were going to release her to me. She was coming home to me. God made a better for you, and it's hurt. Every time I said that I'm alone. Richard Kaysen, Neha Jackie Kaysen, Barbara and William, Willie Howard, Shirley, Willie Mitchell, and I know I got a lot of family. Amen. You know, I got, I, got, I got the McGee family. Right. Those are my family. I feel like I'm alone, but I'm not. I'm hurting, I'm hurting, but I'm going to be all right. I want to thank y'all. Amen. 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 Are you not alone? Not alone. Uh, 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 Eddie might be. You don't never come to something like this happen. I'm not here, buddy. You know, but see, you went to the military. Oh, yeah. You were in the military. You were in the military. But I'm so glad, I'm so glad that you come out of the military and see your mama in the chat. Amen. 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 And thank God that you come home and see your mama. Yeah. Right. Cause a lot of them see their mama. Amen. Or you gotta come back here and walk like a duck. Yeah. And you come and see your mama. Okay? okay. I ain't out there with back of every day. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, I'm on faith. Cause that's my sister. Amen. She loved me how to cook. She didn't mind me love. Told me how to make love by family. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. She told me, love each other. Mm -hmm. I got a cat. That cat came in my house, in my car. I used to just like my dark dean sister. I want to say something in the church house. Don't pull it out, because I put it on. Okay? I was going to get my food out of the car. I was going to get my old black. What I call your mom? Black. Huh? That's my black. 
My grandmama. Black. That 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 is not there's no mama. That is my grandmama. Huh? That 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 sounds to it. Huh? That sounds to it. Tell you something. I love my black. Be strong, son. Be strong. Oh, you hear about? You ain't got one child. But don't. I can then Palm Beach see you. Amen. Huh? Amen. If I'm my family, I'm coming. Yeah. If I got a rock, ball, a cow, I'm coming. Amen. If I got a cell, break in the stove, ball, a bait, I'm coming, my family. Amen. I'm coming. Thank you. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Oh, Pastor, other ministers, I'm here to say something about Aunt Weezer. She's my aunt by marriage, but she's my cousin by blood. Yeah. My Amen. brother Willie over there can tell you about that. Yeah. But you know, she will always, every day, ask my kid, she will call to the funeral home just to see how I'm doing. And you know, I know she's got a whole lot of nieces and nephews in here, and I hate for you all to leave out here feeling bad, but. She made me feel like <laughs> I, I was her special one, you know? <laughs> because she made me feel like that because did you all get a call every day? <laughs> but, she, but she would, you all, and she was ready. She would always call me and talk about her arrangements. She sure did. Jim, and she'll call that lady, that lady answer the phone. I want to speak to Jim. And when I talked to her, she said, Jim, I'm, I, you better make sure everything all right with me when I leave, all right? I said, yes, ma'am. Yes. But Lord, you know, she was a wonderful, sweet person. As long as I've known her, I've been knowing her all my life. I married her niece, Evelyn, the late Evelyn William McGee. But uh, Jane, God is good. Yeah. She was crazy about you and you were crazy about her. Yeah. She was your rock. <laughs> yeah. But listen. God ain't brought you this prayer to leave you, okay? Amen. We Amen. all family. And I love you, bro. God bless you all. Thank you all. Amen. Amen. If I need a shoulder to lean on, she listen. She say, Eddie Joe, it's gonna be all right. I say, but we, you just don't. Want. She say, yes, I do. <laughs> it's gonna be all right. All of us have to go through storms sometimes. I say, yeah. And you know, so she, I needed a favor one time. I told Ashley about it yesterday. <laughs> And I went, I, I went to, I could have went to other people, gone to other people, but I didn't. So I called Weasel off to herself and I said, Weasel, I need to ask you a favor. She said, what is it, sir? Y'all can talk about it now, cause it is a word. <laughs> I said, Weasel, I need $150. She said, when you need it. I said, tomorrow. She said, you got it. She put it in my hand, y'all. I said, Weezer, I can't pay it back to you this week, but I give it to you my next paycheck. And I put it back in her hand. Now, to this day, I told Ashley the other day, I never heard anything about what she did for me. Amen. Nothing that this lady ever done for me, I never heard it. That's a friend. Amen. See, you can't call everybody a friend. Because some of these folks channel six new. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They they waiting to get it and they gonna put it out there. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. But this lady, like I say, when I was sick, she would come. Or she would uh, not too much calling. She would come. And like I said, I didn't have a ride sometimes. She would come. And I did the same thing for her. Cause this was my Bluetooth connected. 
This was my friend. Amen. And honey, Jane, oh, she cried a million tears for you. <laughs> I want you to know this. Our children don't know how much they hurt us. Yes. See, I done been down that road too. And I don't sugarcoat nothing. Amen. If you don't like it, you just don't like it. <laughs> but she cried for you. We both were sitting there because I had sons in there too. And I, both of us were sitting back there and just talk with each other. See, when you're going through the same thing, you can talk with each other. Amen. But now she's resting. She don't have to worry about nobody. Because she's in God's hands now. She's resting. Amen. And when she couldn't rest here on earth, y'all, it was too much going on. Too much. Too much. She was in a storm. And when I say she was in a storm, she was in a storm. Because people don't treat you right all the time. You help this and think they're going to help you back. Sit there and wait on you. You have to miss me a colic. <laughs> yes, but Jane, she loved him with all. Her son, she loved him and would do anything in the world for him. Amen. I'm a mother, same thing. Same thing. But Weasel, baby, I told you, I don't have to wait to get here to tell you. I told you before you left him that I love you. They're going to love you as long as breath stay in this old body. Amen. Y'all, to God be the glory. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Amen. Some wonderful expressions of love Amen. for Auntie Weasel. Amen. At this time, um, we're asking uh, Miss Renee McKinnon to get ready as. We read the uh, obituary silently, and uh, after a few minutes, she will come with a song, and after that, the eulogy. One more, one more. Oh, it's one more? Okay. I, I think I know him. <laughs> I'm going to put him on the clock. <laughs> Jane? Yes, sir. Yeah. Man, on now. You, you won't know pit on bevel on me. You go pit bevel me now. But when she was living, she didn't put that putting your hand on me. <laughs> Put that bell on me, Auntie Weasel. Well, she ain't pretty ready about me. <laughs> we do the fight in Pitcock, Joey. <laughs> yeah, we do the fight out there. And your daddy, we need to get into all the time. That's what you got. That's what you were putting that bell on me about him. <laughs> Jane, 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 I miss you. Now you come and pick up George and I ain't get you. Amen. Go ahead, Jane. <laughs> now if you would, you can read your obituary silently.
Amen, amen. If you would, just please give a round of applause to Miss Renee McKinney. Give her another hand clap. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Well, we're here today uh, to uh, shed some love on the memories of Auntie Weasel. And uh, I, I was listening to, to Jim and and uh, Jane Leroy. <laughs> but when I was growing up, and even, even uh, when I got grown, she even came to visit the church. She called me her baby. <laughs> That's my baby right there. No, nah, she didn't call me every day. <laughs> yeah, she was one of the, she was one of the uncles and aunts that I had that spoiled me. I love being spoiled. My mom and daddy used to tell all my uncles and aunts, "Y'all spoiling that boy." I'm like, "Mama." Shh. <laughs> amen. Amen. All right. Um. I do have a message for you today. Uh, I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and uh, verses 12 through 14. 1 Corinthians 10 and verses 12 through 14. And this is what the scripture says. It says, Wherefore, let him that thinketh that he stand, take heed lest he fall. He says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that that you're able, but, but with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. And then verse 14 says, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Flee from idolatry. So if y'all would give me just a few minutes, I want to talk to you about hard times will come. Hard times will come. I heard Eddie Joe Eddie jo just say that there's some tough times she had, that tough times will come. Uh, uh, but you know I know this is a hard time but uh, to be honest with y'all men of y'all really don't know nothing about hard times I even tell my children and my grandchildren that from time to time that they don't know nothing about no hard times for many of y'all hard times is my cable got connect disconnected Oh, I can't go out to eat this week. Uh-huh. But I'm here to tell you that Aunt Weasel, she grew up in and lived her earlier life in hard times. Hard times. She knew hard times. You see, how many of y'all grew up in the 50s and 60s? It won't be too many raised their hand in here. See, see, that's the time I grew up in, and this was the time that she grew up in. See, see, some, some of y'all, you know, y'all have dyed your hair out of y'all, because I, I did it too. <laughs> but I decided I'm just going to let it, I just let it be great. <laughs> what you say, Jim? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> But listen, <laughs> but, but she grew up and I grew up in a time when it was hard, y'all. See, I'm talking about hard time. I'm talking about when uh, the Jim Crow era, where you couldn't go in the same waiting room in the doctor's office. You couldn't eat in the restaurants. You had to go to the back to get your stuff handed to you. 
See, y'all don't know nothing about that. I'm talking about the time when you couldn't use the same bathroom as the whites could use. I, I, I'm talking about I'm talking about a time when we didn't have running water. We pulled the water out the well. See, y'all don't know nothing about that. I'm talking about a time when you ain't had no inside bathroom. You had to go to the toilet outside. <laughs> see, y'all, see, 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 I'm talking about, you know, you ain't had no clock to punch. You, he come, the man come to get you to work when the sun was coming up, and when you got home, it was going down. Check this out, y'all. I, when I was a kid, I worked for three dollars a day, not an hour. <laughs> Hard work. She grew up in a time when it was hard time. Now, hard times in the Bible is referred to as trials, tribulations, temptations, and another word they use is afflictions. Afflictions. It is this this word, these words, hard times. These are times when we face trouble, adversity, fear, and anxiety or worry, okay? It is when you go through pain, you go through hurt, and you go through loss. Now, y'all right now, and well, me too, we are going through a hard time right now. Isn't that right? Can I get an amen on that? We are suffering right now a painful loss right now, and it hurts. We have lost my Aunt Weasel. We've lost her on this side. And so now you cannot engage with her in conversation anymore. You cannot hug her anymore. And it, it hurts. That's why James is crying. It hurts and it's hard. But God is saying to you, listen to this, hard times will come. This ain't the last time. Hard times will come. So he said, why not let me help you? See, that's the message that he wants to send to all of us that are going through trouble, going through hard times is why not let me help you? Let me see you through these difficult times. He's saying, listen, what we don't really understand and what we don't realize is that God has seen us through some times that was we unthinkable. He's seen our ancestors through slavery. That's hard. He's seen them through Jim Crow period. He's seen our ancestors through the civil rights um, movement. He's seen us get our rights and be free. And then we tell him, forget you. I don't need you no more. But most people will not turn to God for help because they think, well, that's just life. How many of you said that whenever you were going through some trouble, going through some hard? That's just life. So what they do is they just go right on and take the hit. They go through the trauma and then they move on. But just think about it, y'all. If something was always happening to you, wouldn't you want to know who's causing it and why? So listen, if you had just interviewed for a job, okay, you don't went and tried to get a job, and initially they say you got the job, so you got accepted. But then they call you up and say, a person reported to us that you were not as reliable as you said you were, so we decided not to hire you. Tell me something. Wouldn't you want to know 
Who is this sabotaging me? Who's doing this to me? Wouldn't you want to know? Yeah, you would. Absolutely, you would. So why not want to know where these hard times we go through come from? Who is the source of these hard times? So this is what I did, y'all. I sought God for an answer to this question. And he revealed to me some scenarios that the reason that we go through hard times. Okay, reveal number one. He says, people already accuse or blame him, God, for everything that happens to them anyway. Why did God doing this to me? Why God took my baby? Why God put this cancer on me? So, how would those people feel if everybody blamed them for everything? Just think about it. And then reveal number two, he said, people will say, it just happens. It's happenstance. It's just life. The reason why they hold this position is they just don't believe in spiritual things. They do not believe that there is a God. They don't believe there's a devil. And they don't believe that there are angels. Spiritual things. They think the idea is fairy tales. Just like they learned about Santa Claus. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. They don't believe it. They don't believe that grease is greasy. Until they slip and fall. They don't believe that fire is hot until they put their hand in it and get burned. So God showed me that with these trains of thought, they just take the pain, buckle under the pressure, and get broken. And they are oblivious. They are oblivious to God's help. Oblivious means they are unaware of God's help. Now, the bulk of our hard times come from the devil. How many of y'all know that? So you see, Satan is the head devil. And that's, the, that's whether you believe in a devil or not, that's irrelevant. It don't matter. It doesn't change the truth that he does exist. And I don't mean no, no red creature with horns, wings, and a tail. But I'm talking about a bona fide fallen angel that you can't see. I'm talking about a diabolical creature that has thousands of other devils or fallen angels under his control that are out to wreak havoc on all of us to cause us as much hardship as they can. So, so you see, y'all, the devils are not in hell. You know, like we've heard so many times, but they're right here on earth with us. Making life miserable for us. Uh, there's a story of a man named Job. Job was a man that was dedicated to God, and he worshiped God. And the Bible says that Satan went to God and said, God, the reason Job loved you so much is because you done blessed him so much. He got all of these herds. He got all of this wealth. This, he's rich. He said, if you take that away from you, he'll walk away from you. God said, no, I made Job, and I know him, and I know he won't walk away if he loses everything he got. And so, and so Satan said, well, let me have it. And so, and so God said, okay, then he's in your hand, but touch not his soul. So Satan goes to work on Job, and he, he, he burns up his crops. He kills his herds. He kills his children. Come on, somebody. He, he, make, he, he put sores on him. And, 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 and Job still stayed dedicated to God. But there's one thing that Job said that we do. He said that God did it. He said the Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. 
And the reason he said that was because he had no revelation of a devil. Just like some of us got no revelation of a devil. That there is a really a creature like that uh, working against us. He had no idea. So, so, uh, the devil ain't in hell. He's right here with us. So, and another thing, guess what? A lot of the times, it ain't even the devil. <laughs> Causing pain, trouble, and loss for us. Know who it is? Us. We the problem. We do it to ourselves. And still yet, there are times when God determines that you need a Job experience. So sometimes the trouble that is being caused, God permits it to come to you. Although he's not the one that's causing it, he permits it to come to you because he knows that it's a good test of your faith. That it can strengthen you. That it can make you strong. You don't know you can fight until you've been in a fight. Isn't that right? God is saying, if you could ever acknowledge him, God, and accept him, he said, letting him into your life and letting him help you through hard times, then you will understand what Joseph meant when he was going through and in, in the hard times in Genesis, the 50th chapter, and verse 20, when he said, what the enemy meant for my evil, God meant it or used it for my good. Trials permitted to come to us, God will use it to strengthen our character, and it's supposed to make us better. Amen. But sometimes we go through stuff and don't get no better. Amen. But it's supposed to make us better. But here's the thing. There's a catch. Somebody say there's a catch to everything, ain't that right? Amen. But there's a catch. God wants to help you. Listen to this now. God wants to help you. But here's the catch. It's always on his terms. See, because we want God to help us, but we want him to help, him on our, help us on our terms. Now, this is where, this is where I want to drop my anchor for a little while. And I'm going to spend some time here. All right? Because you might not like it when I spend some time here, but I'm going to spend some time here. God has already chosen you. He did that when he made you. He just wants you to choose him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, let me just tell you to keep this in mind about God. God is not a part-time lover. Amen. He's looking for commitment. He's looking to marry you. He wants to enter into covenant with you. Marriage is a form of covenant. And he will only accept you through faith in the blood that his son Jesus shed. All right, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. His son Jesus was sinless but died for all of our sins. And what God wants us to do is to believe in the death, the burial, resurrection, and the, you know, that rising from the dead. That's what the resurrection is, rising from the dead, and the ascension when he went to be seated at the right hand of his father. He wants you to believe that, that he is now alive. Seated there by him, seated, seated by his daddy. And then the Bible says that when we believe in Jesus, we sit it and we are seated in high places with him. All right. And so, so when you believe this, listen now, this I want you to understand this. When you believe this, God considers, well, first of all, the Holy Spirit comes in and changes your spirit on the inside, and then God considers you born again and considers you his child. But that's only through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father but 
by me. No other religion, just by him. There's no other way to God. So you see, everybody, listen to this. Now, this is going to blow your socks off. Everybody is not a child of God. Now, Jesus at one time being confronted by the Pharisees referred to the Pharisees as the children of the devil. Yep. Even though God made them, he, he, he considered them the children of the devil. Being born into this world does not make you a child of God. Amen. Just a creation of God. Amen. Creation of God. So you must be born a second time. Are born again through faith in Jesus and the Holy Spirit to be his child. But people are so set on living their lives on their own terms until they cannot commit to living their lives on God's terms. A commitment to God means living your life on his terms. See, people want to go to heaven without having to change. And that's just not possible. Amen. It ain't possible. I had to change. Amen. They got to change. Romans 12 and 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed or changed by the renewing of your mind. You, if you change how you think, and you will change how you act, you'll change how you live your life. So that's what the Bible is for. The Bible is to change your thinking. Change your thinking. Okay, so I'll take my anchor up. I'll move on from that. With all that said, God is saying, make me your God for real. And I will see you through hard times. He's saying, he will fortify you with his word. He'll strengthen and empower you with his Holy Spirit. He is saying that he will equip you and prepare you to do battle with the uh, with spiritual enemy, with your spiritual enemy, the world, the flesh, and the devil. He'll not only call you his child, but he will also make you his soldier in his army. And he'll have you ready to do battle because some people think the church is a hospital, but the church ain't a hospital. A church is a place where you come to learn to do battle against spiritual forces. Uh-huh. Like Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 3 to do. He told him, he said, to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You'll be no longer a victim, but then you'll be a victor. That's what I like about, I, that's what I like about Ashley's husband's name. His name is Victor Christian. Victor winning. He wins. Christian overcome and win. That's a strong name. She ought not to never worry about nothing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And guess what? The battles that are too much for you, he'll fight them. He'll fight them for you. He'll say, There's no need for you to fight. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But no, many won't choose it. They just won't. Sometimes we preachers feel like we just wasting time. But we still got to go on anyway. Uh-huh. Ain't going to choose it. They've been deceived in the staying the same. They call it having a good time. And then they've been deceived. People have told them, child, just be yourself. Child, you can love God and still be the same person. What you changing for? Here's the, here's, the, here's the best one. Child, God understands. 
He understands how weak we are. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're right. He understands. He understands that you, you are trying to fool him like you do a regular people. Child, ain't nothing wrong with cussing and sleeping around. God forgive you. No, that's deception. When you choose God and be genuine, he will minimize your hard times, your trials, your temptations. When you choose God, he will then hear your prayers. And you can ask the Father to not let you face so much hard times. You can. Because Jesus, remember, when Jesus was teaching the disciples to play, pray, Jesus said, pray, lead us not into temptation, test, trials, tribulation. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Just like our, you know, but we say we're standing on our own. Uh, that, you know, like our base scripture says, he said, wherefore let him that think that he stand take heed that he is going to fall. You know, when you're trying to stand on your own, that you're going to fall. Then he says, there's no temptation that is taken a man that, such as common to man. So temptations are common. They're going to come whether you're with God or not, but when you're with God, they're easier to handle. Easier, easier to face. And in, in, in that la the last part of that verse, it says that God will make a way for you to escape. So it don't make no sense to me to go through hard times here on the earth without God, then die and go to hell for even greater torment. That don't make no sense. Okay. So why not let God help you here on earth and when you leave these bodies behind, we go to live eternally with him, free of any more hard times. Because Revelation 21 uh, uh, said, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. That's what he said. We've gone through so much until we think that I've done all right so far. I don't need religion. And I don't need God. We rely on our own self-sufficiency. Just like uh, my uncles and uh, my uncles and my dad and my uncles was. Uh, I had now listen, I my, my I had some, I, my dad and my uncles didn't play radio. They would fight at the drop of a hat. They would cut, fight, cut, shoot. But the thing about it was they never bothered anybody. They didn't go picking and looking for a fight. But if you bothered them, then you're going to have to fight. <laughs> but that was self-sufficiency. And as they got older, some of them learned that, you know, I got to rely on God. They, some of them learned that my knife, you know, ain't enough. My gun ain't enough. That I had to have something that is... Uh, something greater to fight with and so uh, what they did was uh, they went on to get what the Bible calls uh, uh, weapons of warfare that are spiritual weapons for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or not natural but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds so we, we need, uh, we need, we need uh, spiritual weapons uh, to fight in these times when we come to God we get his word because his word, you know, when we need, when we need healing, we can, we can go to his word and say, God, you know, your word said that by Jesus stripes, we were healed. And then uh, uh, faith we, is another weapon we can use and when we in need, when we need, uh, when we need $150, uh, we can say, okay, God, your word said that you shall supply all of my need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And then when Eddie, go, Eddie Joe go to ask for some money, guess what? She going to get it. Uh-huh. You got prayer. When you can't talk to nobody else, you can talk to God. Ain't that right? And he'll talk back to you if you just listen. 
And listen, when you're feeling like we are feeling right now, there is joy. And joy is different from happiness because happiness is something that, that you feel by what's happening on the outside. So you call it happiness. But joy is an inside joy. It is what the Holy Spirit puts inside of you. So no matter what you're going through, you still feel that joy. Come on, somebody. I heard a singer say that uh, he said that people think I'm crazy because when I smile, when I cry. Hallelujah, somebody. I smile when I cry. Why? Because I got joy on the inside. And sometimes your joy run out. So when your joy run out, don't worry about it. The Bible says that you can praise the Lord. And when you praise God, here comes joy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because God inhabits the praises of his people. So when you praise, you bring God on the scene. And he'll fight for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'm through. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn this portion of the service over to the hands of Mr. Jim McGee and staff. Amen. Every heart say amen. 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 To Cousin James, on June the 22nd, 2023, our family chain was broken. And right now, things are not the same. But I want to let you know today that one by one, He's going to call all of our names. Yes, and then the chain will link again. Yes. You see, it broke our hearts to lose Aunt Weasel, but she did not go alone. For a part of each of us gathered here today went with her. That day, God wanted her home. Amen? Amen. It is at this time on behalf of Mr. Jim McGee Sr. and your Stevens McGee family, we stand with you today and we share with you this token of love and it's in loving memory of the one and only Mrs. Claritha Kaysen or better known to all of us here today as Weasel, Sunrise, October 26, 1943, Sunset, June the 22nd in the year of our Lord. 2023. I am free. I find it 
very honorable to be called auntie. Amen. Growing up, you have a lot of aunties, Amen. a lot of aunties. Amen. And you love them, they love you, they spoil you. They make you feel like you belong to them. <laughs> and so, because I get to be called auntie now, I wanna represent for all the aunties today. <laughs> Let's give my auntie weasels memory a round of applause. Amen. Amen. village that it takes to raise a child could not survive without the auntie. Amen. 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 I stand today before my family and say to you that you have been blessed. Yeah. There are good friends here today. There are good friends that have called, checked on us during the week, yeah. made sure that we were not without comfort, and not without support. Amen? Amen. Amen? To those that have called, those that have been supportive, just know that my family is grateful. You see, we know that support comes in many different forms, but most importantly, some of you have prayed for my family during this time. We believe that the prayers of the righteous avail as much. So continue to pray for my family as we continue to pray one for another. Amen. I say this to families every weekend, so I say it to my own family as well. A family that prays together stays Amen. together. Amen. 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 To those supporting us via live stream, just in case we're not able to say thank you to each of you individually, I stand today to say thank you collectively. Amen. 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 We want to say a special thank you for the message that was rendered on today. Amen. And Amen. we want to thank God for the messenger, my uncle, Pastor Calvin Williams. Amen. 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 We thank God for the Church of Perfecting Saints family. Amen. God bless you. Amen. If there are ministers within the congregation, we're thankful for each of you as well. Amen. To the family, we know that your hearts are heavy, but we want to remind you that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And we hope and pray that as family, we've been able to help erase some of your pains and maybe make the days that were dark a little bit brighter. If we've done so, just know that our goal has been accomplished. On behalf of my dad, Mr. Jim McGee Sr. and the entire Stevens McGee Funeral Home staff and family. Always remember my family, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. 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 God Amen. bless you always is our prayer. Amen. 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 Yeah. 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 At this time, I'd like to call some of Aunt Weezer's nieces to come down and serve as floor attendants. Afterwards, I'm going to call for some of her nephews to serve as pallbearers. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your name From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will see Of the goodness of God Oh, my life, you have been faithful. 
Thank you.